So this was the microphone setup. All right, let's turn my own audio. This is a microphone setup that I had uh, prior to this week. Um, I am using a program called uh, Cantable. Cantable. C a n t a b i l e. Cantable Lite as a VST host. And uh, I have it set up with a couple of really basic things. Um, this is a noise dampener. Um, without it, uh, there is a significant um, audio uh, um, noise on the line. Uh, and I can... I think I can display that somehow. Oh, I can display that by just uh, going into this here real quick. And you should be able to hear... There's sort of a persistent, like, background hum that kind of never goes away. And uh, so, you know, that's there to get rid of that. Um, use a noise gate just to sort of cut off any sort of bass sound um, that uh, is under sort of a certain, certain threshold, really just very, very quiet sound. Um, I use an equalizer that is kind of basic human voice equalization. Um, I don't even know if it's really very good. I'm kind of still tweaking it, working with, uh, with equalization there. Um, and then, uh, had it going through a compressor. Um, this does two things. Sort of brings up low volume sounds while suppressing high volume sounds. So, generally speaking, a, a viewer should be able to set a volume and sort of expect it not to deviate too much from that range. Um, and that's what I've been using until last week. Uh, last week I got in a new microphone. It is a uh, Fine. what is this, like a 669, I think, T? Uh, Fine 669 T. And it is uh, a significantly higher class microphone. The one that I'm using now, and, and you'll be able to hear the uh, the difference in quality here in a moment is uh it's just it's a microphone that's like attached to my headphones um and it runs through the uh what is it the like 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the front of my desktop um it has sort of the only advantage going for it is that when i turn my head to look at other screens and stuff uh it turns with my head and then you for a second i can't feel me coming Okay, and uh, so again, that's that's sort of the only advantage here. Um, I use a, a program called Voice Meter, uh, in this case Potato. Um, Voice Meter Banana also works. Um, Voice Meter Potato has the advantage of um, allowing for more hardware inputs, and it has a third virtual input, uh, and it allows two more hardware outputs, but I'm only using A1 and A2 anyway, so that's not a really big deal here. Um, but uh, currently, um, I have a, a B1, which is this column, is my uh, my computer's home, like sort of default audio uh, channel, and uh, then B2 here is my microphone sort of input output, and uh, that's sort of uh, uh, I guess how that's all working. So um, having this set to B2 means that that's going to this input channel, and then this input channel is being picked up by anything that's listening to my mic, which includes Discord. Um, so, what I'm going to do is disable this, and enable my new mic. And you should notice an immediate quality difference, and I'm going to listen back to the stream to make sure that that is in fact the case. Um, but, uh, the, the new mic, uh, it is, uh, it's mounted on an arm. It's got like a pop filter and a wind guard and all of that. Um, it is, uh, what, it's like significantly, um, sort of, of just higher build quality and stuff. And, uh, hopefully, uh, it ends up being a lot better in, in a lot of ways. Uh, going back to sort of the audio effects chain I've got on it, um, there is still sort of a little bit of a background noise. And you can see sort of the pale yellow line here. Even when I'm quiet, most of that is like the heater running in my house because it's like 
20 degrees outside as of the time I am recording this, Fahrenheit. Uh, and so, you know, that's there to sort of eliminate that. Uh, I'm then using a downward expander. Um, this is set currently to a ratio, a threshold of, of 20 decibels. So anything quieter than 20 decibels, which are, sorry, negative 20 decibels, um, which in this case is most uh, like when I'm clicking on the keyboard, uh, clicking the mouse, that kind of thing is reduced at a ratio of four to one. And that makes it so that, you know, those sounds still make it through, but they're really very quiet. Um, and sort of the goal of that is that then I can set this noise gate at a relatively low level um, and it'll just eliminate most key presses, um, you know, mouse clicks, that kind of thing when, um, really when I'm not speaking. When I am speaking, it opens the gate up and you can still, like if I, you know, I just kind of play, uh, click on my keyboard, you can kind of hear that still, like, you know, intensely clicking on my mouse. You can kind of probably still hear that. Um, but if I let this die and close the gate, like it looks like it's still opening a little bit. I might need to do a little bit of adjustment on that still, um, but it should be significantly quieter. Uh, and part of that is because you can see here, um, this is the input and this is how much it's being reduced by, by the uh, downward expander. So that was play clicking and, and then typing and, uh, you know, there's, it's being reduced significantly, but this is speaking and you notice there's not really like a whole lot of downward expansion going on there, even though I'm not really that loud of a speaker. Uh, finally, the equalizer and the compressor, which are set the same way as before. Um, I'm using this auto makeup feature, which does bring my volume up a little bit. You should notice it; it's somewhat quieter when I uh, when I turn that off. But I keep it on for two reasons: one, uh, I am a naturally sort of quiet speaker, and two, it helps make up for when I look away to my other screen. Uh, it helps bring that volume back up. Uh, even though I'm not uh, like the mic when I'm when I'm facing forward is just off to my left, just out of the wave of my vision of the screen. Uh, and that makes it so that, you know, if I look totally away from it like I am right now, uh, it's still a pretty good volume. Uh, and then I've also got this in there. This is Protoverb. It's not actually on right now, but it lets you do weird, just kind of gimmicky stuff. Like I'll turn it on and you can kind of get like these other voice effects and stuff out of it. Uh, I'll go to one of these unused presets, but you can, uh, you can set this to, you know, like lots of weird reverby stuff. And, and, uh, there's a lot of these settings, the, the, you know, the thick butter verb or whatever that means, but it's, you know, you can see the decay is very high when it's sort of in there. And that means that it's, it's getting a lot of that reverb in there. Um, you know, I've tried even looking to see if like any of any of these sound, you know, okay for streaming and they're like, they're all right, but I don't know that they're really that necessary. And I found that uh, Discord doesn't pick up on them very well. Um, for whatever reason, it tends to cut off, especially a lot of the reverb stuff um, makes it sound real weird uh, when I'm talking with other people. So, you know, for the most part, I've been just leaving that off, but it's, you know, it's a fun gimmick thing to be able to turn on every now and then. Um, but I really just, I wanted to show the difference between sort of the old mic uh, and the new mic, even just for my own sort of uses. Um, given that I am not really planning on using the old mic anymore, I'm actually going to just remove all of these to reduce the uh, burden on my computer. Um, because it is old and busted and not really, not really up for a lot of this. Anyway, uh, I think that's really all I've got. That was almost 10 minutes, so I'm really just going to leave it there. Um, mostly I was actually recording that, so you may be seeing this on YouTube later, I guess. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you want any information on, uh, on, uh, you know, how to construct an, an audio effects chain like this, uh, hit me up. I can, I can hook you up. These are... Uh, I should say these are mostly Reaper plugins. You can just get them off of the Reaper, I, I think, website. Uh, Reaper, like the Grim Reaper. Uh, and uh, and they've got a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, Protoverb and this downward expander from somewhere else. I'd have to look up exactly where I found them. But uh, 
you know, you can, you know, Google around, it's your friend, and uh, it should be able to point out a lot of these sort of VSTs for you. Um, there are some VSTs you have to pay for, um, but these were all free. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and catch you later.